Yes, well, my percussion teacher, Ron Forbes, who was a peripatetic percussion teacher, um, was tremendous, as indeed were the two uh, classroom music teachers. They were, they were fantastic as well. But my peripatetic teacher uh, for percussion, he basically saw all of his pupils as sound creators first and foremost, then musicians, then percussionists. So it didn't matter whether you played the paper and comb, percussion, violin, voice, cornet, whatever. It, our, our role was to produce sound. You know, that was it. And so the instruments that we played happened to be the tools that we used. And, uh, you know, you can give someone a hammer and a nail and, you know, give that to 10 different people and they'll all do 10 different things with that hammer and nail. You know, so that was it. So we're all very, you know, different in, in uh, you know, how we engage with something. And so he really understood that each pupil has a story to tell. And he found that once he struck a drum, that that drum really resonated. But in order to experience the resonance after the attack of that drum, so bringing the, the stick on the head, that actually the body had to pay attention to that resonance. And normally, you know, you get the attack and then you're waiting for the next attack to happen, you know, the next strike on the drum or whatever instrument it is. And we're not always digesting that resonance, but it's that resonance that kind of is the, the real essence of the sound. And just as the preparation is, you know, the visual aspect of seeing a, a percussion player or a violinist or a cellist or a trumpet player coming up with their instrument and then you know, it's all this pre stuff that the eye will see but the eye stops seeing and the ear stops hearing after the attack you know so and then you interpret that as well i don't now hear anything well actually there's still a magical sound going on so the body has to slow down and he realized this which is why he asked me to put my hands on the wall of the music room and after he struck that drum, he said, right, where are you feeling that sound? And so I'd say, well, wherever I was feeling it, you know, my fingertips, my hand, the palm, wherever I was feeling it, my legs, my chest, my neck, my tummy, whatever. And bit by bit, he would change the pitch of those drums. And lo and behold, the subtle difference in physically what you felt was, was quite extraordinary. But this was a complete and utter revelation for me. Because up to that point, I was just trying to feed all the sound through the ears and the aids, the hearing aids, were boosting the sound but not giving me the clarity. So an awful lot of things were really painful to, to, to hear. I was almost hearing too much sound. And that really affected the sense of touch and my balance. And it affected my enjoyment as well. I just was playing louder and louder and louder in order to hear myself over the already barrage of sound that was coming through my head. So um, actually, by taking the hearing aids out and by using the body as a huge ear, you know, I could then digest and, and allow all of the sound to be fed and distributed throughout my whole body. So it was an amazing revelation. And I discovered that things did not have to be loud anymore. You know, actually, the softest of sounds I could still feel in a part of my body. So suddenly all of the senses were taking part in the process of digesting and creating sound.